This is episode 112 of the Walk On Pod, and we are back with a special guest. Our very, very close friend, Will Fitzpatrick, is joining the pod for the third time today. Uh, if you haven't listened to his first episode, it was episode four. Uh, he talks about his whole story being a walk on, his whole basketball career, and it's an incredible story. He is a perfect example of what we preach here at the Walk On Pod. And if you haven't listened to it, please, please go listen to episode four. Uh, he was also on our 100 episode special, the Superlatives episode. Um, and then he's back today to talk about his new venture in his basketball career where he's gone back to be on the coaching staff of our alma mater at Vista Delago High School. Um, he's going to get into it and kind of his steps that he's taken in that, but it's an awesome conversation. Uh, you know, it's fun. It's serious. There's a lot of insightful tips, and these are four basketball minds just having a conversation. Uh, it's a very, very good episode. We finished the episode with starting five basketball accessories. Um, I will say we lost our focus a little bit, but it, it turns out to be a pretty fun uh, and entertaining listen. So, again, if you haven't tuned into our socials, please make sure to click the link in our Instagram bio, and it will take you to all our socials where you can follow us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of the above. Uh, make sure you're tuned in. We are getting new media out often. Uh, we have some new things in the works that we've been talking about, so that's going to be posted on all the socials and all those links, so please, please make sure you're tuned in and tapped into that. Uh, but with that being said, we're very appreciative that you are here, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Thank you for tuning back into the Walk On Pod. I am, of course, Luke Abdolovich. With me, as always, is Tommy Ball and Jared Waters, and today we have a repeat guest, uh, someone who is uh, foundational in what we are trying to build here with the Walk On Podcast, a super, super close friend of the pod. And if you have not listened to episode four featuring William Fitzpatrick, please make sure you go listen to episode four, the original episode with him where he tells his whole story uh, leading up to his college basketball career and everything beyond that. Um, but with that being said, we do have William Fitzpatrick here with us. Uh, Will, thank you. Love the shirt, by the way. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you for being here. No, it's an honor. Yeah. Always appreciate you all. Always repping, huh? Trying to. Can we can we get yeah. can we get one of those made with the walk on patch on the that'd be tough on, on, the, on the shoulder? Yeah, yeah should we sponsor? Yeah. yeah. Something that we might. They, are you guys that. are you guys out there peddling banners? My name's Star. <laughs> um. So you gotta start uh, somewhere, like, Will. You gotta start. You gotta somewhere. start somewhere. So so like I said, Will. Again, if you haven't listened to episode four, please please go make sure you listen to episode four. Um. Will is an embodiment of what we talk about here. He has a very similar story uh, to a lot of the stories that we talk about on here where, you know, someone finds a way uh, to make something happen in the basketball world. Uh, you know, we, we could dive into it a little bit, but he's taken, you know, what he built as a walk-on and into being a scholarship player and a very, very successful college basketball player into, you know, the next step for him with basketball. Um, and I don't want to take your thunder. I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, – tell everyone what you're up to right now but uh it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome and i think people are going to start seeing uh the the ripple effect that you have in this basketball community here soon yeah i mean best way to put it just back to the roots um back up at vista lago high school obviously where luke and i graduated together um back involved in the, in the basketball program there um assistant coach on varsity the upcoming season. So um, Luke and I kind of got our foot back in the door there over the summer. And obviously Luke, Luke's playing career is still taking him, still taking him places. Um, me being back home, you know, excited, excited for a good season. Um, you know, just back at Vista, we, uh, you know, Luke and I can go on and on just about how special it is to play there. And then I kind of be back involved, not only in the basketball world, but being back there. Um, it's a truly special opportunity. I don't take it for granted at all. And you know, every day is truly a blessing to be back there and, you know, working with a great group of kids now. So fun to be back in the basketball world, um, you know, on the coaching side of things now. Kind of kind of always knew I would find my way into coaching at one point or another. Um, fortunate enough to be back at Vista. So, yeah, it's kind of just kind of where we're at now. Um, excited for another season coming up, uh, getting back in the competitive spirit, the spirit of things. So in – in not only Will fashion, but walk on pod fashion. He's very humble there. So he said both him and I got our foot in the door. That's not entirely true. Will put his foot in the door uh, this summer to to get on the coaching staff. And then I kind of piggybacked and rolled the coattails and said, hey, while I'm around for the summer, would it be cool if I helped out as well? Um, so, so he could take all the credit there. Uh, and two, 
again, if you listen to episode four, if you know Will at all, Will, Will and I, our team at Vista went the furthest in school history. We have the most wins in school history. Will is, Will's name is all over the record book in school history. And these kids that he are not, he's now coaching were first and second graders when we were uh, seniors and juniors in high school. And they all know who Will is. They all know who Will Fitzpatrick is. They all remember him watching. They all remember him dominating in the nest, right? And so you come back now, however many years later, what is it, seven, eight years later, and he gets to coach them. And I think he's hit the nail on the head. It's a great group of kids, and they listen to him really well. But it, it's awesome to see kind of just the immediate gravitational pull that someone like you has uh, in a gym because, again, like we know how high school kids can be. They, they could turn a blind eye to anyone real fast. I think we all can sit here and agree to that. Um, and I did for for the part of the summer that I was there and the times that I'm around, that is not happening over there. That is not happening at all. They they show you the utmost respect, and I know they listen. And I've seen them grow over the last few months, uh, with just you know the the little work that you've been able to put in. So I think the trajectory for you and the Eagles uh, is on the right path. It's definitely on the right path. Yeah, no, I mean, it, I can't thank you enough for that for that words of encouragement. It really is just coming down to a good group of kids that are kind of working hard and you know, that they deserve to win too, right? They've been through a lot, and they get into their whole story, but kind of a new page, you know, back in the, back in the Vista program, you know, with the goal of getting it back to where it was when Luke and I were playing there um, with our guys and winning games. Like Vista can be a good program. There's no reason it shouldn't be. So that's kind of the, the main mindset going into it, getting it back to where it should be, you know, winning games, having a good impact in the basketball community, you know, here in Sacramento area. So that's kind of the mindset going into it, get it back to where it should be, where it's been in the past, um, and even new levels that could get to, you know, years down the road. Yeah, totally. Well, what do you think that first, I don't know how, maybe, maybe this might be tough for you to put into words, mm-hmm. but like that first Friday night game where you're on the sidelines instead of being on the court, like, how is that going to feel for you? Like, that's such a cool full circle moment. Like you're gonna be leading these kids, and I'm I've got no doubt that forever for however long you do this, like this is gonna be a very good team as long as you're on the staff. Like, how do you maybe find a feeling to what that's gonna be like that first time when, when your guys are out there and you're coaching them instead of like in the nest? Yeah, no, I'm I mean I'm looking forward to it. I I kind of don't know what to expect. I know it's gonna kind of hit me right in the face when it happens, and you know kind of take my breath away I'm sure just to like you mentioned to come full circle right like instead of you know us running out getting out there for warm-ups just being out there watching our guys do it um this has always been a fun place to play especially especially when we have something good to root for so I have no doubt that absolutely no doubt that we'll have have good support behind us through the school and it'll be a fun environment and then um you know just something I want to make sure I, I kind of don't take for granted either right the opportunity I have kind of be back where I got to play where Luke and I got to play and just knowing how special it can be and, you know, just appreciating, appreciating the opportunity at hand and, and, you know, what it kind of means to, to play basketball Vista, you know, trying to make that something special once again. Yeah. Those kids are lucky, man. They don't, they probably don't realize what they have at their disposal right now. Like that's awesome. I'm excited for them. Mm-hmm. For you. Um, Will coming uh, on the same, same thought process, what do you think is the one thing that that you're trying to instill that you learned in your time playing college, right? Because maybe some of those guys have aspirations to play in college. Maybe some of them don't. But obviously the lessons you learned playing, like your whole college journey, uh, you're going to take those with you for forever. So what's the one thing that you think through that you're that you're trying to instill in them? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think the biggest thing, and and I'm sure we've all kind of talked about this at one for another, is just like controlling the controlling what you can control, right? Controlling the controllables, right? Like, you know, you can't necessarily control every night if your shots on like it should be or whatever the case might be, but you can always control how hard you're playing, and especially at the high school level. Like me looking back on it now, right? Obviously, I I could say I wish I I learned this in high school, but learn it a bit after but you can truly make an impact on the game just from working hard playing your hardest like and doing doing the little things right like it doesn't take too much skill to dive on the floor you know play good defense grab rebounds things like that and then from there um you know i'm sure we all believe our basketball gods are a real thing right so you kind of do some some things right you'll get rewarded in one way or another on the offensive end you know get some extra stops whatever the case might be so 
I think that's the biggest thing, right? Just just playing hard every time you're on the floor and just seeing what that can get you and seeing how much easier that's going to make the game for yourself. If you, if you can make the game easy for you and your teammates, right, then then that's going to be a pretty, pretty good night for you guys out on the floor, um, no matter who you're playing against. Nice. Well, I think uh, – yeah, but- no, I was just going to say, before we get too deep in this – conversation which you know this is this is bad podcasting by me but i think we would be remiss uh if we didn't give a shout out to coach josh gould uh he's Mm -hmm. the one that made this all possible and uh he's a new head coach over at vista and he's doing a great job over there and he was very open and um appreciative of will and i being hands-on and helping the, the guys out during the summer and obviously will being on staff and throughout the rest of his tenure and stuff so uh just wanted to give a quick shout out to coach coach gould because shout out josh yeah, good and, dude, uh, really good dude. I think he's he's you know the right step for Vista. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll pay you back on that. Just Josh has been awesome, been great getting to know him. Um, excited to kind of go into the season with him at the helm. I think Vista did a good job, um, you know, bringing him in, and I think it's the right guy right now for um, for what these guys need and where the program needs to go. So I think Luke, Luke did a great job there. Obviously, giving him his due flowers and just want to pay you back on it. It's been it's been awesome working with him and kind of a good guy to have at the helm. Um, you know, kind of get him to the Sacramento basketball world, um, coming from Bay Area. So exciting stuff. Uh, exciting stuff with Coach Josh for sure. All right, my fault, Jared. I just, you know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to no, get too far into no, it without. No, no apologies necessary. That was a good. That was a good uh, impromptu interrupt. Yeah, there we go. Um, well, the other thing I was going to ask you is, mm-hmm. <clears throat> what's what was the first? What was the first thing you or the first difference you noticed from? the players now and your time when you were in Vista, like doesn't that not positive, negative or anything like that, Mm -hmm. but just like, what was the thing that jumped out to you first when you started like actually getting around the team and stuff like that? Yeah. I think the biggest thing, and then I I know Luke and I had had plenty of conversations about it too, especially over the summer when we were both there all the time was these kids don't quite yet know how to win. Right. I think, I think that's the, that's the biggest thing in, you know, and that's not only talking about games, it's talking about in practice too. Like even if we're just playing, you know, three on three in practice, or, you know, if it's one of the nights where Luke and I are jumping in, we're playing fives, getting up and down, it's just kind of learning how to win and, you know, kind of the skill that goes into winning, right? And it kind of goes ties in the back thing, right? Playing hard, taking care of the ball, things like that. Um, and then we kind of saw it this summer too, like we'll kind of get late in games and it's a close game. And, you know, beginning of the summer, we didn't quite know how to, how to finish out games, right? Whether it's for up and keep doing what we're doing, or if we're down a couple buckets, how to how to put some stops together, right? Get some easy shots, things like that. So I think that's the biggest thing. I think it, that gets overlooked a lot. And that's kind of the first thing I think that we both notice is like, man, it's a great group of kids. They just they just don't know what they need to do to win yet. Um, and then, you know, that thankfully has progressed to the point now where they're learning more and more how to win, whether it's in practice, you know, whether it's little drills or whether it's you know, kind of these preseason games that we're playing in these scrimmages, whatever the case might be. Yeah, I think that's – I would agree with that for sure. And I think one thing that's a common thing with Vista, and it's been like this probably since it's open, and I think it's just kind of the Folsom, El Dorado Hills area is like this is – the the brand of, of kids and athletes, like they're all very, very nice kids, right? But when we're on the basketball court or we're in the playing field, whatever it is, like there comes a time and place when you got to step on your opponent's throat. Right. And I don't think that this group of kids was ever really taught that. Um, and it's not ne- like not a negative thing, but like inside those lines, it's, it's no time for friends. Right. And we're all here for one common goal and that's to win. So I think that was the biggest thing, uh, like Will said, just learning how to win and, and taking advantage of those opportunities. But another thing too, and Will kind of alluded to it was like, these kids just don't, and we've talked about this a lot on the pod. They just don't play basketball as much mm-hmm. as we did. Like they, like Will and I, like Will, Chris, Grant, Brandon, and I would go to Handy Family Park and check up with whoever was there any given every, any given night. Like we would just go play. You go to California Family Fitness. You go to Brasso. You go to wherever you are and play basketball. It doesn't happen as much anymore, right? So a lot of these practices this summer, like. Coach Gould or, you know, we would come in with, like, what do we want to do today? And we were sometimes like, let's just lace up and get up and down. Like, let them play. Let them figure them each other out, playing on the same court with each other. Get familiar with each other's tendencies through just natural and organic basketball because I don't think it happens very much. And then we would watch them raise their level of competition to a whole new level when they were guarding Will and I. And that was, like, a perfect example of 
never playing down to your opponent and never taking someone too seriously. Like you have, you're, you're going against two players that quite frankly are going to be better than anyone they play this year. And that's not to like pump me or Will's tires, but I'm playing professionally. Will is a D- division one basketball player who's extremely successful. They're not going to see that. Like in, we're two grown men against high school kids and they were raising their competition. Like their life depended on it. Right. So the message to them was that has to be, how you play every single time you step on the floor. It doesn't matter who's on the other side or who you're guarding. Like you have to treat every single person as if you're playing coach Will and I, like that was, that was our biggest message. And I think that's, that's when they started to see within themselves what type of competitors they could really be. And you saw them buying into that a little better. Yeah, I think, I think that's huge. Like, and it's, I think just one thing to add to that is like going out and playing on your own and like playing for the right things too. Right. Like, you know, us us five can go and play like you mentioned, and we're still going to play together, right? So we're still getting better when we're playing, even when it's not controlled, even when it's not organized and things like that. And then just having that mindset of, you know, we found joy in that too. It's not like we were going out there because like, hey, man, we need more practice. Right? We, like, we enjoyed each other. We enjoyed, you know, just playing the game and getting better that way. So I think that's the biggest thing, right? And then building your confidence through playing. Like, I mean, they got some stops on us over the summer, obviously, like, you know, they hope that builds their confidence, right? Saying, hey, man, I can do this, right? Like you mentioned, right? Like, they don't need to be the nice guys. They can they can be competitive on the floor and, you know, kind of keep proving themselves, like, hey, they're good at this too, right? And um, there, there's a lot in store for them as we continue to learn that, right? Going to season, playing these better teams, things like that. So, yeah, I think we've nailed it there, right? Playing for the right reasons and then just getting better from playing and kind of, kind of seeing those results um, kind of grow into fruition for them. I think another thing we need to touch on too is kind of like we're talking real broad, right? I think one thing that you brought immediately was a sense of culture. And I think that was something that all of us probably didn't learn until we got to college basketball. So I Mm -hmm. think having someone that one is relatable to the players, uh, you know, obviously you played there, you're not too much older than them and they got to watch you in high school. A lot of them probably watched you in college at FLC and at Sac State. And so, how what was what was the process that you were taking in order to build a sense of culture and i know that everyone always throws that word around like culture like what does it actually mean but i kind of want you to touch on what were the steps that you felt like you had to take in order to build a sense of culture within those kids yeah i mean i think yeah the biggest thing is you know i wish i learned the importance of of playing on a close knit team earlier than i did but nonetheless i'm thankful i did you know at any point and then kind of seeing where that can take you, like playing on a team that's close, like you're going to beat teams that are probably more skilled from you all the time. I know we've all we've all had those examples, right? Going into a, going into a game where we're kind of undermatched, you know, whether it's by size, skill, athleticism, whatever the case might be, right? And you find out a way you find a way to win the game just because you're more connected. And um, that's kind of my mindset into it, especially like. You know, we look at our Vista kids, like we're, they're great kids, absolutely. We don't have anyone that jumps off the page as far as like athleticism or size or, you know, we got skilled guys, but, you know, not nothing like high, high level D1 recruits or anything like that, which is completely fine. And then just kind of recognizing that and seeing, all right, we're just going to be some games this year where we have to win just because we're closer than the other team, right? Like it can, comes down to the end of it. It's much easier to, you know, dive on a loose ball, you know, take a charge knowing that you have your brother's back versus like, you know, these fracture teams that we've all played against where like it's it's one on five, right? Whatever the case might be, you know, all right, it's my turn to get the ball three possessions from now, things like that. And that's just not, it's just not a good way to, it's not sustainable, not going to win you many games. So that was kind of my mindset going into it, especially just looking at these Vista kids and also just knowing how we had success there, right? The same thing would apply to us, like, we weren't crazy athletic, right? We played much more athletic teams, and we still had great runs just because we're connected. We knew we had each other's backs and things like that. So that was kind of my mindset. And then obviously in college, learning the importance of it just because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're going to win us the games, right? I can't go out there play for them. We can't call on Luke to go out and play for them, right? It's got to be them them doing it on the floor and, um, you know, them picking each other up whenever it's needed, right? Basketball is a game of five for a reason, which is a beautiful thing. And um, I think I think that's kind of been the, the main mindset is doing everything that we can to kind of get these guys to truly build a culture of doing it for one another. And then like Luke mentioned, and doing it for a common goal that's bigger than themselves. I think that's that's my that's my true love for the game is right. You guys are doing something for a collective good. 
bigger than yourself and bigger than anything that you could be. So that's kind of my mindset. I know I can I can go on for days and days about it, but that's kind of just what excites me, especially getting back into coaching and, you know, hopefully spreading that knowledge in any way that I can and how I can translate, you know, off the court for these guys as well. I think it's just going to be dope to watch you kind of grow with them. Like, I know mm -hmm. you won't, you won't advertise it. So I will like, you're, you're staying late after with them doing extra work You're You're showing up, you're doing individual type workouts. You're, you're doing the extra steps and stuff. And like, again, these are kids that are what 14 through 18 years old. Like that's going to last with them a lot longer than we probably noticed. So I think it's just going to be really, really dope to watch you because I can already tell the way that they, they gravitate towards you. So just watch, watch them kind of grow with you and, and latch on to the things that made you successful. And, and I think, you know, it's going to be huge for Vista moving forward, just because anyone who's listened to this and it doesn't really make much sense. Like this is not an athletic, like powerhouse by any means. If you hear Folsom, like you think of Folsom high, obviously their football team is obviously nationally ranked all the time. Their basketball team is always one of the best in the area. Like, you don't really hear about Vista very much, right? So I think Will and I share a commonality that we were very proud that we made it out of there and, you know, made something of ourselves playing at Vista and going to the local school. But also, like, he's coming back. And so I think that's going to mean the most to these kids and these families that allows them to trust you so much. So I, I just think it's dope. Like, I, I'm probably rambling right now, which is fine. But I got I got pride. You know, I'm a proud alumni, so it's all good. Jared, did I cut you off there? Sorry, it looked like you were about to say something. No? Okay. Anyways. Uh, I always have something to say, but. Uh, okay, so, because I'm going to pivot a little bit here. So, I mentioned Sac State. Um, Obviously, again, if you haven't listened to the first time Will was on here, Will was a walk-on at Sac State, found his way to being a scholarship player, led the team in minutes, had, like, two turnovers his senior year. He was an incredible career. One of the best shooters in the big sky. Uh, you, The list goes on and on for what he was able to do there. Um. There's been some murmurs. There's been some murmurs about Sac State recently. Um, we got to talk about this Sac 12 committee that has been popping oh, up on my Twitter feed. Let's talk about this. Now, I, I have a screenshot, actually, of what this whole Sac 12 business is. So let me let me be a good podcaster here, and let's break it down. Now, as far as um, conference realignment goes, there was recent news that the Pac-12 is going to reinstate a few teams. I don't remember those teams Exactly off the top of my head, Tommy, Jared, Fresno Will, State, uh, Fresno State, Colorado State, um, San Diego, San Diego State, State, Utah State. Okay, so there so we they go. Have, they have six teams. They have six right now. So Washington Four. State, Oregon State. Uh, Boise was in there too. Oh, maybe Boise. Uh, maybe not Colorado State then. Maybe Boise, San Diego, or Utah. I'm missing. I'm missing Boise's one of them for sure in there. Boise, San Diego State, Fresno State. And then there's one other that I'm – it's either – oh, maybe it's UNLV. That sounds about right. That makes sense. Yeah. And then I bet, I bet you that Utah State and Power State go too, but – Yeah. Um. Anyways, with all this, this murmur and this recent news with the Pac-12 kind of having a, a rebirth here, uh, a committee has been formed around – Sacramento State Athletics called the SAC 12, right? And they have developed a plan to get the Sacramento State Hornets into the Pac 12. Now, I have a tweet here with five different things that is a part of their plan. I saw Number this. one, this is crazy. securing $50 million in NIL commitments to cover the first 10 years in the Pac 12. Number two, securing funding and approvals to build a new state of the art football stadium that seats at least 25,000 attendees. Number three, securing and funding. Securing funding and approvals to build a basketball arena that seats at least 6,500 attendees, which is huge, to be honest, because if anyone's seen Sac State's gym, it's the size of a middle school auxiliary gym. <laughs> Number four, turning out at least 15,000 attendees per home football game for the remainder of this season. I feel like that doesn't go very far. Number five, securing $5.25 in conference fees for the NCAA realignment into the Pac-12. Now, Will, Do that. obviously you've probably seen all this. This is mm -hmm. not news to you. I'm just reading for, for uh, so we all can be on the same page here. What are your thoughts as an alum, as a former athlete there? Do you think this is the right move? Do you think they're going about it the right way? Do you think it's going to happen? What, do you, what are you thinking? I mean, I, initially I like it a lot. I just think, and whether it's, whether it's the Pac-12, I heard some murmurs of the Mountain West at one point too. Yeah, I heard that too. Um, 
I think it's the right move. Just just looking at Big Sky, looking at Sac State, that just never really made sense, right? And I get I guess for some reasons it did. And and interesting enough, at other sports at Sac State, you know, did compete in the Big West, which I always thought made more sense for Sac State too. Um, might have been like men's soccer that competed in Big West and golf like that. But all in all, I think I like it. I think those are probably some hefty goals, and I'd be very interested to see how those play through. Um, obviously the one that hits close, you know, to me for us is, uh, is the basketball arena and see how that plays out, you know, obviously going, going through the years of hearing that there were plans and the plans got voted no. And, um, you know, the last thing I heard was the well is a pretty cool facility and they were kind of doing some work in there to kind of make that a, make that a home arena. So seeing, seeing how that would go. Um, but I mean, overall, I like it, especially if, especially if, if, if things play out like they're like they're kind of planning right now, obviously very early stages, but I think that could be exciting, right? Have a Pac-12 school here in Sacramento. I think that would help with recruiting a lot, just knowing how good sports are in Sacramento area in general, and um, you know, kind of kind of keeping some of those recruits at home and and putting on a good uh, a good performance just here in the city of Sacramento. Other one would be for football. I'd be interested to see, I mean, because they have a pretty big football facility now as far as seating right that's what i was thinking so they, they, do, I, the, they do the olympic trials there too at the track right? yeah yeah so they, they do a lot of hosts i'd be interested to see or hear kind of how much they host or how much they can seat now and whether it be a whole new facility or could be building onto that facility or or whatever that could be but i mean overall it's pretty exciting um i, th I think for sac state with the possibility of being a pac-12 school and Obviously not the same Pac-12 that we've known in years past, but nonetheless still still carrying that household name and you know kind of moving everything to to uh, you know specifically football, but playing in the FBS now from the FCS things like that and yeah. what that can mean for for the school and and for the city as well. So overall excited, we'd love to see how it plays out and um, you know definitely some hot hefty numbers for them to hit for sure. Yeah, as far as funding and. And things like that but if it gets done and, and you know it plays out and makes sense that'd be pretty exciting to see yeah if we see the william fitzpatrick the second gymnasium out there we'll, we'll know right. who was heavily <laughs> behind the push uh <laughs> no it's actually a good point i didn't think about when i was kind of looking into this a little bit more i didn't think about how sac state is big west and big sky mm -hmm. i i forgot that baseball and soccer and like they they're in different conferences so that's also like because I agree. I do think Sac State aligns better with the Big West just for travel reasons, honestly. But uh, I didn't even that, – that does – that is interesting to me. And then mm -hmm. the same thing with the football stadium. I feel like the only change they would have to make is, like, make it a full bowl because, like, right now it's only, what, the two sides, right? Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think I think it would be dope. But the one thing that I think would be really cool is, like, whenever, like, specifically with, like, the, the rise of NCAA football with the video game and everything and the craze that it's kind of become like unless one of us like I know Will like you uh, as a kid like your mom and, and you would sometimes last to Texas Tech because she went there and like I mm -hmm. I really wasn't like a college fan like I was a Duke fan because I like JJ Redick I, I didn't you know I didn't have any ties to anybody right it would be pretty cool if a real power quote unquote power five school was down the highway like that would have been pretty dope like yeah i feel like that would change like you're saying the local uh pride in their school and everything and i think sac state is making a, a more local push recently with players like you and obviously zach uh zach Chappelle just became mm -hmm. a coach there like i think that's a huge move in the right direction but i think it would just for local pride and morale would be pretty pretty cool yeah, like yeah, I think I mean, we're talking basketball specifically. Like obviously, Sac State's always kind of gotten uh, what's the best way to put it? Like almost looked down on basketball wise just because of the gym, which like I mean, it's really not bad, right? Yeah, it's small. It's gonna be smallest Division One gym you play in, right? Smaller than most high school gyms, whatever the case might be. But with that, like it was still a fun, a fun experience, and you know, obviously, it doesn't take away from on the floor and things like that. It makes for a fun environment. But to build on that, like if, if they truly can get, you know, a, a college level facility for them and, you know, playing these games and even still for the big sky now and still hosting these games, whatever the case might be, definitely exciting to kind of have that environment, like you mentioned, right down the street, because 
Then we get to the point where, you know, we have we have this new Pac-12 form and say Sac State gets in there. And, you know, I, I'm sure I'm sure there'll be some solid programs within that conference that have to come to town every year and things like that. And I mean, I think we see uh, honestly on a, on, a, on a larger level how good the fan base can be for Sacramento Kings. Right. Kind yeah. of how how Golden One's a tough place to play. And, you know, that's obviously a whole different conversation, but still ties into the city and the city loves basketball. And, you know, obviously basketball is kind of the biggest sport here. Um, just look at the Kings and I'm, 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 there's no doubt that can triple down to Sac State as well, especially if, you know, playing in a better facility, playing in a higher conference, you know, quote unquote power five, like you mentioned. Um, so, I mean, all sides of stuff start. So I think it all sounds good. And now we kind of just got to buckle in and see how it plays out. Obviously not a quick process, I'm sure, but hopefully still one that can pick up some steam soon and, have some good support behind it. Yeah. Jared, how do you think it will uh, kind of change like the youth basketball or because I know we've talked a lot about Sacramento basketball on here and do you think it could be a positive step in kind of retaining talent? I think uh I think it'll depend on who the coach is. It's always going to depend on the coach, right? Uh, I mean you, it's easy to tell, like on a grander scale, it's easy to tell the coaches that really focus on homegrown recruiting, like even in big areas like Indiana. And uh, that was like, I, so my family is like all IU grads. So that was like a big beef with like some of the previous coaches that IU has had is like all the Indiana kids were not going to IU. They were going to Purdue. They were going to Ohio State. They were going to Northwestern. Like, they were going out of state, and that was, like, making the IU uh, faithful very upset. So I think that's the thing is you just need to get somebody that is, like, super committed to keeping the home – like, keeping the uh, hometown kids home. Uh, This is stuff that I've – we've all talked about in separate conversations. Like, like we've all known – coaches not just in Zach state but like other schools where it's like oh you live you live 20 30 minutes from where this kid goes to school like it doesn't like kill you to pop over there like once a week like if that's a kid you really think is good you know like uh there's so many kids that that left that had a lot of success at the same level and higher levels than Zach state um that never got looked at um by Sac State or like a UC Davis or something like that. So to me, it's always going to come down to like how, how much of a priority it is. And that'll depend on the coach. But I think the easy thing to do, like to me is the coaches that get super heavily involved in the community, make kids want to go there. Yeah. That's what I think. I think like if you're having camps and you're inviting kids and you're going to games and like everyone sees the Sac State polo at like their games, like it's going to make them feel whether it's Big Sky, Big West, Mountain West, Black Pac-12, like it's going to make them feel like Sac State is a viable option when you like hide in the shadows and kind of like move like in the background, then like nobody, nobody knows who you are. Like I, I can the way I would, I was actually told somebody this the other day when I first started training in SAC, I would go to games all the time and I would sit with the parents. And it was like, it was all the parents sit together. So it's like an easy conversation to have. Oh, this is Jared so and so, blah, blah, blah. This is, oh, the, he, he trains, you know, Gavin or this kid or that kid or whatever. And like, and then that kid has a couple good games. And then like, next thing you know, it's like now those people want to, learn the same stuff that that person's learning so it's like i look at it the same way if you want like you have to you know you have to water your garden if you want your flowers to grow wow yo hold on let me take note of when you just said that so yeah, yeah okay. that, one out. that was nice oh <laughs> that was real nice um fellas do you two have anything else for for coach Fitzpatrick here before we move on to the starting oh, five over under on text over under on text that's all i wanted to say all right so oh. So, so this, this is funny. Going in, going into the summer, I I would have said for sure, like you set the line at one. I'm going under. Just like just had pure confidence. After what is in the summer, is higher for sure. And hey, he's getting the he's getting. It's, it's like four text. and a half, right? I, is no, it not would, four and a half? I would put the line at three and a half. I think the oh, line at three wow. and a half what is a nice good. Guy. I think four and a half. No, is because safe. Bet. No, because five sounds like a lot. Like four is like that okay. Is you know, lot. he got he got feisty a few. But games, but you know okay. I mean? So hear me out though. Hear me out though. Over let's say a thirty game span, right? A thirty game span. Yeah. You're gonna get like 
Will's going to get two texts solely based on something that stupid that one of his players said <laughs> and, and to the ref. And then the and then rest going to be fed it. up with what yeah. Will said. Like, you know what? Like that one of the players is going to be out actually. there just like saying something crazy to ref. And then Will's like, how do you not see that, that reach right there? No, that's it. We're sick and tired of you guys. Dude. Oh, like man. no curse, like no curse words, no derogatory. Just like mm-hmm. the ref has been fed up with, just you not know, have anything else. Yeah, freaking Yo, Paulo over here. I think, I think, I think, I think we, 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 we don't need to. <laughs> no, I can name, name drop Paulo. I can name drop Paulo. Paulo, shout, shout out, out man. Paulo, man. That's our guy. Oh, look, I, I'm going to tell a quick story actually because this is on this is on subject. So <laughs> we're playing, we're playing at this this Pleasant Grove, shout out to Marquise Chris, at this Pleasant Grove uh, summer league. He would deny that shout out. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's why I said it. Um, and for all intents and purposes, it was, it was bogus. It was bogus. For all intents and purposes, it was bogus. But I would say 95% of high school summer leagues in June are bogus. Right. Um, and this is, we're playing Oak Ridge for the second time that afternoon, right? We just played them. The eight minute running clock quarters ran out. All right, let's just re tip with them, right? Because they were supposed to have two teams. We were supposed to have one, whatever the reason was. We're playing the same team back to back. This ref is checked out. This ref is checked out for sure. So Will's over here, you know, fighting for his players. You know, ref, are you going to call something? He's getting on him. He's getting on him. That's a bad call. I don't know what you're seeing there. Protect my guys, blah, blah, blah. So the ref comes over here and he was like, Do you want to ref this game? Well, with no hesitation, I'll do a hell of a lot better than you are. <laughs> it's just like it was natural too. It was natural. It wasn't. It wasn't aggressive. It wasn't malicious. It was it just, was just a matter of liner. Just matter of like, one liner. I started dying. That's the most will. To... That's the most will response I've ever heard. Right? That is goes. so good. Yeah, like I'm, so I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll just get a couple guys this season that like do multiple games of ours. They just. You know. Yeah, so four and a half is a good line. Uh, it might be a good line. I don't know. That's, that does seem man. like a lot. Will, are like, you the type of guy that will get, like, first name basis with the ref? Ooh, probably. that's a good one. If they do a good job, maybe. Andrew, but, Andrew, like, come on. Come on. Drew, what but is like, that? Mo. My man, uh, Mo. So. <laughs> like, that, that's, like, a certain level of respect. And, like, I, I think they got to earn it. Like, I mean, obviously, like, we're on the opposite side of it. We are always going to think refs do a bad job. But, like, if we're speaking, like, 100% the truth, there's some refs around here that do a very, very poor job. And you can just tell it's just from lack of being around the game and, and things like that. And that's not even if they're wrecking my game. It's just my, in my, general speaking. My, yeah, no, I don't even think that's a knock on anyone specifically. That's just, like, I think yeah. high school refs in general probably just, like, like yeah. it's just It's just going to yeah, happen. I've been ref in high school a lot lately, man. Point, I just, point, I just point need made to, right now. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just need what I need is I just need transparency, man. If you just tell me, hey, man, I'm sorry, I missed the call. All right, yeah, I do that. Okay, do that. my That's bad, I missed then. it. That's yeah. actually really good. Yeah, like, hey, all right, got you. Missed it. My bad. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I got into it. Yeah. I got into it with a coach on Tuesday. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> You're that's still not right now. <laughs> Tom, Bro, he Tom. was, he was being such a jerk. Define get and it. I was like, dude, and we it was like getting to it. Well, this was so, so the problem was the problem was like I had been doing varsity and junior varsity games all night long, and then our last are you game, notorious around there now? Do they know when you walk in the gym? They're like, oh, uh, this is be a rough dude, one. I might be like I've been getting scheduled. Yeah, I've why is Devin Chinzo freaking reffing our game <laughs> okay. right now? This is crazy. <laughs> I've been getting scheduled like Tuesday night like league games. Like I think I'm like kind of like upper guy now. I think I'm getting like the higher special. level games. The low no, peak I, game. <laughs> I got into it. I got into it with this this coach. It was like we were. It was like third grade, and he was third like, grade. Yeah. Oh, now, it, now we're. Wait, now. what are we talking about? Wait, that's, what we're doing high that's what I'm, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I was doing high school games all night long, and these third graders rolling. And I look at my partner, and I go, "Oh my gosh, this is gonna be horrible." And he's like, "What do you mean? Like, no, oh, like it's easy." And I'm like, "No, dude. Whenever I have a third grade game." It is no, the that's, worst. That's bad. I remember FYP. Whole already. entire. Yeah, thing. it's not what you want. Like, it's just, you're, they're just clanging and banging. It's like, what do I call it? <laughs> traveling, <laughs> <and> kicking <laughs> the ball. I don't it's know so what, to, I literally don't know what to call here. One kid literally <laughs> tackles a kid. I call a foul on that kid. But then the other, like, the, it was like, the parents erupted. The coach is like, can you give us a call? And I'm like, coach, I'm going to need you to shut up. 
Like, I just, I just need you to shut up over there. And he's like, your partner's swallowing his whistle. And I'm like, I, I don't want to tell you. I really don't want to tell you. Third graders. That's yeah. crazy. You see, you see the guy with the kid comes down, little in and out, and then the crossover goes over his forehead. <laughs> over his head, dude. It's like, they're like, Carrie. I'm like, no, dude, no, no. Yeah, relax. Like, they, they like, all can't dribble, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's not I exclusive have to a, just I have like a, I did have like a seventh grade girl the other week who carried every time she dribbled the mm. ball. And I was like, okay, like, I don't, I can't, I literally can't call it every time. See, yeah. you're, you're, see, a guy like me would have said she's going to learn her lessons tonight. Well, no, I called <laughs> it like five times. She's going to learn how to dribble I called tonight. it five times, and this, the other coach was still mad at me for not calling it every time she touched good, the good ball. Him. It's time for these kids to get better, man. Yeah, like got that. seventh grade. I ended up getting her bench, sadly, and I'm sorry. I really am. Like, God, Madison went home. They're going to watch this and be like. <laughs> you got to learn how to dribble, you. whoever you are. Yeah, you got to learn how to dribble. Yeah. Come on, Madison. Uh, no. Yeah, so Will's gonna get a few texts for sure. Yeah, I think It'll I think it's just though. like I I also think too like like we there all will just be said film it. of it by the way too. Yeah, that's gonna be it. awesome. They got uh, the automatic they got the automatic huddle film up there, so it's out there. Yeah, it, it will be. It'll be clips. I'm sure there's just gonna yeah, be I have some the coaches film. Have have they put those cameras in the high school gyms in Sacramento now. I think the, the motion the handful of them. I don't know. Vista has it apparently. Cool. It's just going to be like, it's going to be impossible for you to run into at least three. That's all I'm thinking is like, there's going to be two you uh, probably I, earn, but like, there's I think gonna you be get like two, two max. Or, well. No, I think there's going to be two or three where it's like, it's just a matter of circumstance. Not that you did anything wrong. Like you just got a guy at the wrong night or yeah, you guys are fighting time. for, you guys yeah. are fighting for a playoff spot. Like, uh, you know I don't what, know. They, what's I also true is the bench warning. Bench warning. Some of these refs recognized Will. This happened multiple times this yeah, summer. They recognized true. us. They'd be like, hey, you guys were good players back in your day. And I was like, okay, back in your day is crazy. But <laughs> they recognized him. So let's say one I mean, of them back has in a your vendetta. Day, that's accurate. That's like eight years ago. No, but it's like that's saying that neither of us still have it anymore. Like, you know, that's what I'm not what they were saying. No, but yeah, I don't know if they're. Yeah, yeah they weren't saying that. I took it personally. No, yeah, I was going to no, say, no, this guy's no, making no, no, bullets and I went back in the huddle and I said, that's just why. Seven tonight. That's just Luke. That's just Luke creating something out of nothing, which makes him a competitor. Yeah, that's good. Exactly. Nothing that's wrong good. With that. There's nothing. <laughs> wrong no, it, uh, I'm excited yeah. to see. I'm excited <laughs> to see. That, for... Hey, Will, you hear that riff? You heard that? You heard that? It's been washed. No, before. Tell him to check up right now. That Luke is so the type of guy to look at Will after that. Is he disrespecting us? <laughs> oh no, that happened. Yeah. That happened once a game. That happened once a game. Yeah, but sure. the thing that the problem that I ran into this summer when I was on the bench was like separating myself from player yeah. to coach. Yeah. So like we had a kid first tournament go up and pin this kid, like chase down LeBron block in in again, kind of out of nowhere, right? Haven't seen this type of athleticism out of him yet. Like still early in the summer. Boom, hands him above the rim. I stand up. I said, wait, I'm a coach. Let me sit down. Good, good, hey, good block, Max. Good block, good block. Like, it, things like that. And, like, or, like, if something funny happened on the court, like, I'm ready to be like, yo, he's with us. And I'll be like, oh, I can't say that. Like, I'm a coach now. Like, you can't. Like, Guy's got a so polo that, on. That was, the, that was the hardest thing for me. Like, I don't know. Like, Will dealt with it a lot better than I did. That's so what you're sure. saying is you need to go coach AAU. As this is yeah. coach. that's yeah, yeah that sounds AAU like guys. that's what I'm sounding like. The talons need to be revamped with Luke at the helm. Well, Luke, Luke makes a respect. good point because it's like I mean, this is obviously a whole different conversation, but like <laughs> the type of basketball kids that we run into now, and just like oh, the way geez. they play, and like I'm not even <laughs> not even get into it, but just like Luke mentioned, like I got to be careful because it's like I'll be quick to say like you know someone does something crazy, think they're making a nice move, like 15 dribble combo plank a shot like I'll be the first one to go same, same thing with Luke is like you know over exaggerating like oh good defense like no chance that's all whatever the case might be I need to catch myself every once in a while knowing that like hey these are still high school kids sure I don't agree with the way they're playing or the things that they're about but you know still kind of watching the time that way so that ah. Nah, I mean, like, the opposite way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, just, just as far as just, <laughs> I'm like, going the opposite just being way. on the bench and just kind of let's, remembering let's get to the roll, starting I mean. five before we get down yeah. there. Yeah, that's yeah, a, that's yeah, a, that's yeah, a, that's that's a whole other Thank you, Tommy. I'm but going just, the opposite just way. to piggyback. But <laughs> now, um, our production team put in a lot of work for this, guys. I just, uh, we're just gonna see if it's even possible first, but we might have something huge. We might have something huge on our uh, radar here. Now, go ahead and tell me if. You guys can see my screen right now. Go ahead and tell me if you guys can see my screen. 
No? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. It's not going to work. I had the draft pull up, right? And I was going to have it uh, – or the, the draft lottery up, and I was going to have it auto-pick our, our draft order. Oh, it doesn't let you share? No, it does. I just it, – it, for some reason, it's not – because it says – oh, here we go. Yeah, you should be able to – there's Boom. different options for sharing. Share screen. Boom. Go ahead. Oh. Oh. Are we sharing screen right now, fellas? No, no, Okay. Okay. Look at this. Oh uh, God. You you are getting a treat if you are tuned in to the video today. You are getting a treat. As you can see here, we have starting five basketball accessories on the board. Wow, we have our man. four teams. Will, Luke, Tommy, Jared. We know we are Wait, in. Wait, can we get a weighted? Is there a weighted way to do the weighted? Or, why would we get weighted? <laughs> Who deserves more ping pong? Press balls? that blue button, brother. Just press that blue I button. Feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like I probably didn't win last week. I should get, like, I we tanked. That's, I tanked, it's so. getting posted within oh, the next Two weeks few ago, I tanked then. With, with that being said, go ahead and tune into At The Walk On Pod on Instagram. I heard the socials are getting really revamped recently. They look good. Um, big time. Big time. Uh, but as you can see here, look, this is a fair draw. Now, everyone can see what I've been seeing. Uh, you know, this is all on our screen. We can all see it. Like, it's it's legal, right? Let's go ahead and click generate order here. Here oh, we go. Man. Here we go. Pick number – actually, let's go backwards. Pick number four. Jerry. God, what the uh, <laughs> Pick number three. Tommy. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Luke, hey, Will in this first slot. There we go. We all saw the pick results right here. It's going Will, Luke, Tommy, Jared. Jared, I thought you'd be happy thought, with the, the fourth nah, pick. No, I wanted honest, first, but, man. I wanted first. But like I said, we have starting five basketball accessories. This is the Jared Waters, uh, Jared Waters special. And uh, let me tell you, I'm I'm excited to see where this goes. I think uh, accessories is a broad term, so we can see what happens. Will, uh, go ahead and kick us off here. All right, starting with my one point guard needs a vision. I'm going with the oh yeah, wait, well before I mean you can take your yeah. point guard first. It's been a while yeah. since you've been on, right? You can yeah. take whatever pick you want okay. at when, whatever moment. Just, yeah, whatever position you want, go for it, and then you know snake draft right here. All right, I'll, I'll still set the tone. My point guard, go with the classic Rex specs. Oh, uh, wow. The, the one, one the the one with the Rex specs. Great vision. Rex 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 great vision. Need the vision. I really did not expect that to be the one. That's one. really good, though. That is actually fantastic. Great. Great. Yeah. Um. Okay, that's good. That frees me up here for my first pick. We know um, who your first pick's going to be. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Producers are getting their stuff ready right now. Okay. Um. My first pick, I wanted to be personal. All right, I wanted to do something. That I actually, <laughs> you know, yeah. Just throw it out there, man. We know. I'm going with a padded arm <laughs> sleeve. I'm going with a padded <laughs> arm sleeve. For At what anyone, position? This It's a shooting guard, of course. Anyone who's watching this or knows who I look, the padded arm sleeve was prescribed to me by a doctor. All right. That that was not a style choice. Okay. That is prescribed to me by a doctor, medical professional. I have to wear it. I have nerve damage. Okay. It sounds dramatic and I'm trying to make it sound dramatic. Yeah, I was gonna give say, me the padded shooting serious. sleeve at I mean, if we're being honest, it, it's that's the truth, but it doesn't really <laughs> matter. But padded arm sleeve at the shooting guard. Go ahead and lock me in. Guy has to make sure he protects his funny bone. Um, I mean, you go ahead and get two bolts in your elbow and see how you feel. I got four screws in my knees. We can talk hardware if you want. Will can tell us all about it. That's true. <laughs> Guys, well first. That's a, that's a past life. Past life. Uh, all right. For those for those who know me as a basketball player, I definitely have never been one to be a drip guy, if you will. And that's what people like to say nowadays. But at the one one, I will select something that I did wear last year, and I enjoyed it. I thought it looked good. I got the wrist tape here. I got the wrist tape. What the position are we putting this up? That's the point guard. That is my That's point, point guard. Right here. Go with the Lamella Ball wrist tape. Okay. <laughs> wrist tape, tape wonders on the left, uh, the left weird. wrist. Oh, single wrist. So you're not a double just wrist. Guy. Single wrist. I'm just All a right. single you wrist. Know, double wrist. This guy WWF. <laughs> Left wrist, wrist tape. I'm not mad at the wrist tape there, actually. I'm not mad at the wrist. Yeah, it's a good pick. What sparked the wrist tape, Tom? Good point. That's a really good question. Dude, I honestly couldn't give you it a good answer. It wasn't it medically was... prescribed to you. Ugh, I literally <laughs> just kind of was like, you know what? I'm just out here like raw dog. I like I look dumb. Like, oh, <laughs> he said he had no I need VC. This is on. crazy. Ah, it's VC. real though. Like I, you know, maybe that was a little PG thirteen for this pod, but it was real. Like I needed to throw something on. Yeah, no, I I'm did, not bad, and then man. I started playing back. Respectable. There you yeah. go. I mean, numbers. Guy got the guy got the blood flowing. 
Don't you? Exactly. BC. Dude, I, 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 know, I threw on some wrist tape and I hit a game winner. All right. I'm not taking, I'm not, I'm, I'm wearing wrist Numbers tape. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> Numbers do not lie. I'm wearing wrist tape from now on. There you go. Uh, okay. All right. Hey, Jared, what do you got, man? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ill prepared podcaster, no, Jared Waters. I'm just like, bro, I'm so thrown off on this conversation right now. Uh, at Power Forward, uh, I, I don't know. I just don't. At Power Forward, this makes me feel athletic. I got to wear compression shorts. I cannot hoop in <laughs> boxers or Dude, regular. Cool, I got to wear compressions. Nice. All right. That's I'm fair. glad that's the route you took. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought, Not what yeah. other route you were trying to think yeah. of there. That's ridiculous. No, I, <laughs> that's why I just let it fly. Yeah, man, right. whatever. You just okay. let it fly. You talk about compression shorts. You see what I'm saying, man? This guy is not a serious podcast. This is, dude. This is, this is crazy. Jared, next Boxer pick. Boxer briefs. <laughs> Come on, Boxer man. Boxer briefs and power forward position. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> All right, that point. You're so funny. <laughs> I do. I'm like a real dad right now. I love it. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, okay, at point guard. Uh Anybody that knows me, anybody that's been around me knows that I have to travel with this everywhere. Sometimes I fit my whole entire life in this thing. And uh, I feel like it's a super critical thing to have as a, a backpack. That's I need a really, really good, take, solid actually. backpack at point guard because he can distribute. Oh, that's solid. That's a really good take, actually. Yeah. I like that's that. Fair. I, that's yeah. fair. We'll have to cross it off my lineup, unfortunately, but it's the right pick there. Yep. All right, Rich, take one more. I'm going small forward here. This is my star player. Uh, I did this in high school. I might need to bring it back in college. We'll see. I haven't made the decision yet. Ankle socks. Ankle socks. What what's what height did you wear this last year? I didn't wear ankle socks last year. So do do you tape your ankles? Nope. See, because I wondered. I've always wondered about the 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 people who want to go ankle sock with the ankle tape. That's an insane. Uh, that's I've never been one to I've never been one to tape my ankles. Only when I absolutely have to, like if I roll it bad, then I'll tape it. But knock on wood, knock on wood, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, no, uh, Tommy, yeah. that is true. Tommy's an ankle sock guy. I can we can all vouch for that. We've seen it. We've seen the tapes. Um. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, I'm gonna stick to my roots here. I'm gonna stick to my roots. I'm gonna do something that. I actually wear. I'm gonna go with the three quarter tights here. I, I don't know if that's a flag because Jared took compression shorts, but I wear the three quarter tights. I don't think there's any specific reason. I don't even think it looks any better. I just think it's a comfort thing. So, give me the three quarter tights. Yeah, no, I hate tights. Here at uh, I'm gonna put it at the small forward. You know, it's a it's it's a it's a lengthy dynamic. defender. Yeah, yeah, dynamic so guy. Probably can catch a lob from the wing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't, like... don't be surprised if you see that one. Uh, Come out this year. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. God, we got to sometimes look. This, this, this is guy is trying crazy. to get me to propagate no, 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 his no. dreams. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was not even going to go down that lane. I'm just going to say sometimes this is a really late recording. You, those of you who are listening in, hopefully you have some new viewers. We sometimes have to cut off our record time. Like it's 1045 for me. It's 1145 for Tommy. Like, <laughs> I think we get a little delirious past the hour of 10 30. Like, so, so just bear with us. Bear with us right, us right now. now. But it, it's going to be comedy. It's right going to be good entertainment, but we are just not locked in anymore. And that's okay. You got through the good part of the podcast, the educational part, and you made Isn't it. Isn't this the whole point of this whole thing? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So, Will, let Keep it fly, man. All right. Crazy. All right. Uh, again, I kind of kept it vanilla during my playing day. So, some of these are just going to be from, from pure viewing. Um, experience. I'm gonna go with my five. I'm gonna go with the Dwight Howard double shooting sleeves. The yeah. double shooting <laughs> sleeves. If wow. we want to get, if we want to get really into it, it's those Addy Tech ones that kind of have like that silver. Yes, uh, the line, like the silver lines on it. Do you guys remember the John Wall two tone? Yes, uh, Chucky. The yes. Half, yes, that was tough. The half blue, half white. Yeah, yes. that was really like clean. That, yeah, that one was nice. We gotta bring that back. It's probably banned, actually. I can imagine it is. They don't let you wear like the Supreme one or anything. So yeah, yeah. That's my, that's, right. my that's my five. Right. Will you got that's another one? Five. Yeah, swing back around here. Um, we'll just go right to my two again. Just pure pure viewing. Uh, the Kobe, the sweat hand, uh, the sweat band above the the left elbow. Oh, nice. I like that, I like that one. 
It's a good look. Just obviously a staple for him. And got to got to got to pay the respects there. Yeah, Rondé yeah. Hollis Jefferson pulled that off when he was playing for Jordan a couple a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. I like the yeah, that is true. I like the the Kobe left over right there. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm gonna make an audible here. Um, at my point guard. This is something that I've never donned, um, and I think you have to be a specific type of player to do this. But those who did it were tough. I think. Give me the, the finger sleeve, the KG and AI finger sleeve at the point guard. <laughs> I think I think that is so tough. I think it's so tough. I, I had just, one. I had I, one. I, <laughs> oh, I thought I could get away with it. I'm that's sick. a good pick, dude. Because I feel like I'm that's sick. a subtle, like real it's swag. Like before maneuver. your time, and I'm sick. I respect it. I know, but yeah, I respect it. That's what I'm saying. I like, I like so, the I, I like the AI version. To be honest, I think it's this a little yeah. I had the, the AI version. It yeah. had the I three logo yeah. on the nuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, nice. that's the one. That's with the answer. It used logo to on it, it used to come. It used to come in the th- in the pack with the armband, oh, the headband, cool. and the finger and sleeve. the corn roast. Okay, no, my bad. <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> and the corn. All no, right, Tom, yeah, go ahead, man. Um, guys. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go shooting guard. I'll go shooting guard here. Uh, this is something that I've also thrown on just for the hell of it. Because why not? You know, variety is the spice of life. So, got to spice things up every now and then. Um, calf sleeve. Let's go calf sleeve here. Calf sleeve. Yeah, that's what I was wondering why you didn't. So you did don the calf sleeve in the media photos, but uh, did. Yeah. Yeah. that's what I, I thought you were going with with the wrist yeah. tape. Honestly, when you said I wore the, the calf, calf sleeve a couple times last year too. Gotcha. Calf sleeve. What's what leg? Because your right leg jumper. For those of you who don't know, so uh, do you put on the right calf or the left calf? No, I go left calf. If I go accessories, uh, I go left eye. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So you're like yeah. bionic. Yeah. All I don't like anything. <laughs> I don't, you know, this, this, this hand does all the shooting. I don't, I don't right. want anything on that side of the body. Right. It's like, uh, what, what, what's the guy's name that got the, the Grand Theft Auto, um, Oh, there's, so of, there's so many people that have that. Common now, right? the oh, ammo. Terrence Shannon like, Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, the unlimited ammo. Too. I'm not yeah, sure. yeah, Honestly, unlimited that is like ammo. that is like one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It was cool when like it was the first person we saw do it, and then a lot of people started copying it. Yeah, it's like, like, ah. like I know kind of it just makes it that much better because he's actually a real bucket. So yeah, he he gets the pass. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we got calf sleeve. Shooting guard for Tommy. What do you got, Waters? Uh man. I do have to pivot a little bit. I was man, that was a nice pick, Luke. I'm still reeling Thanks, from man. that. Um, tape, at center though, the, this is another like staple for me. Uh, and I feel like it should be I feel like every every hooper has owned one or rocked one or has one in their closet as we speak. I, I got center, I got a baggy team hoodie. That's really good. A I can baggy tell you team. what one I, I associate so. with you, by the way. Solana, the Solano Solana. one. The yes, Solano yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one, so, the one that tattered. The t- like, it looks like some, like, old got, man. He kind of yeah. cut the cut the. I cut the, right the, the No, I cut the, uh, I cut the, uh, oh, the, the strings. strings the strings. Yeah, I cut the strings out. Picture, yeah, I like how we all knew exactly what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, we've all seen Yeah, because it's like, you get done hooping, and it's wintertime, and it's freezing outside. You're just like. Throw that over whatever That's clothes a you really have. Good on. Take. Yeah. And it's like the one that you know probably smells bad. Like it's just like yeah. more after practice. Like yeah, like, like it just yeah, it doesn't matter. You're going straight home. What it anyways. is. Yeah. It is what um, it is. <laughs> all right. Well to make sure that my next uh, my next pick, not that I think it'll get taken, but this is an interesting and this is way, way beyond probably any of your guys' time. But I, I feel like I have to give it its flowers. No, don't uh, do it. Please don't do it. <clears throat> Another – no, you're not going to – it's not going to be what you have. All right. um, at my small forward, uh, this was a very special time, and you weren't a real hooper unless you took one of these with you to your friend's house because you guys each had different ones. And, again, these were hard to come by, so if you had one, it was like having gold. Uh, give me the N one mixtape VHS. So crazy. Wow. <laughs> Wow. There was four or five <laughs> volumes, and each one of our friends had a different volume. So you would take it with you, so like, you hey, take we're that going... to the gym. No, we take it to like <laughs> our friend's house to hoop. You know what I mean? Like when you would You'd when watch people it, played and then outside, you go to the backyard. Yeah, and then try to sauce my friend and end up losing the ball down the who's driveway, your, and it'd be who's like, who's your favorite and one mixtape tour player? 
Oh, it had to be hot sauce. Escalade? Uh, no, Escalade. had to be hot sauce. Hot sauce or, or uh, you know, main Escalade, event was... Bro. Main event. Main event. Was, I, remember, yeah, main man, event I had the was, video game. I had the PlayStation he's, 1 he's, and 1. That was like the craziest thing you saw when he split his head on the rim. That's crazy. And they, yeah, in one of the videos. Air up like, there. He was a dude doing like He was nice. 50. Yeah. 50 because he had the AO is one of the staples. AO, Jane, yeah. the dribbling machine. Man, this is crazy. Yeah, so you had to have the V. Like that's like a critical thing to have back in the day when no phone, like no one had phones, no one had DVR, no one had DVDs. It was like, bro, you have the tape, bring it, got to rewind it, then you watch it, then we go try to cook each other. And one mixtape tour VHS. Got it. Okay, back to you, James. Yeah, um, I just want to say this. Like, I don't think I'm gonna win this week. If you want to look, you want to look cool. You don't go to my list. <laughs> you go that to the animal said, mixtape tour. Yeah. With that being said, power forward. I'm gonna go something that I have not rocked in a while. Maybe I'll bring it back just because uh, loose a loose T under the jersey. That's yeah, you do pick. rock that. You do. That's rock actually a really loose. good pick, actually. The loose, loose tea white T. Yeah. 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 No, that's a good take, actually, Tom. I like that. I feel like I feel like someone who rocks a loose tee, you gotta be a bucket. Like you can't wear that's that. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like you got to type of stuff that the Marcus Levette. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, like, like 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 the type of the type of drip that I rock with is like the one where you look at the guy and you're like, like he's so ugly for that, but he's so nice. Yeah, or the ones that were before your time, like Greg Anthony and stuff. Those guys, the UNLV guys, used to rock those. Yeah, yeah, bro. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. You see the dude with a loose tee? If I see a dude with a loose tee nowadays, like hooping, I'm like, it. probably nice. Yeah, Especially and if he's left-handed, woo. Yeah, that style plays right there for sure. Um, okay, this is one that I thought Jared was getting because he said it was kind of like past our time, but these are definitely making a comeback and. Um, Will and I had him in high school. I actually had him for my last year for our warm ups, and I've always thought uh, these. I, I like thought this. these were. I thought these were amazing. I thought they were the coolest thing of all time. My this mom can't vouch for me that, like, growing up, I used to always want a pair of these, and I got to get the rip away pants. The yeah. rip away pants. <laughs> <laughs> the rip away pants used to be so dope to me, and like they still uh, are. So don't get tough. me wrong. And and like <laughs> after this year, we got to keep like most of our gear and stuff, and. I made sure to get a couple pairs of our ripway pants because one they fit really well. Like they got the nice little taper at the bottom, but I just think they're so dope. Like I think it's the coolest thing. So gave me the ripway pants. Tennessee Volunteers, they do it best over there. For yeah, sure. the Vols. Oh, the IU, Vols the IU do it the best. <laughs> I'm, on, so, I'm partial to orange. I'm partial to orange. Yeah. You know. All right, whatever Who's guy. Uh, but ripway pants. Yeah, uh, this is the Lago Eagles back in 2017. They were doing it, man. They that's were a good one hard. to say. That's the only year I've had breakaway pants, and now that you bring it up and jog my memory, that was fun. I, I had to bring them out that. for a practice. What do you? What <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I might need to find where these things went. Starting yeah, at over. shooting guard. <laughs> Ooh, Gab Dolovich. Boom. <laughs> yeah, hit him with the semi-pro. Jackie Moon. <laughs> <laughs> It's a special. It's a special feeling when you get all the buttons in one rip perfectly. Like, okay, good, good lord, fair. go Will. All okay, right, you're that, being that, weird, bro. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> no, I'm saying move on. We don't need to hear about that. It's crazy. All right, am I three small four? This one, this is kind of back to our middle school days. Was the the double Nike Elite socks? Nice, and nice. You're kind of like alternating them. So like, if you're wearing like black and white on the bottom, and you're wearing white and black on top. You gotta line up the the line. line line Or it's like, um, I mean, the I was in middle school, played like you know, Talons at U had a navy, so like the navy and white, and the white with navy. Yeah, that's that's gotta be my three. That's a good pick. I forgot (laughs) about that era too. That was like that was like that's probably the best pick on the list, honestly. That's that's like that's like when Elite Socks first came. I think that was one of the most ingenious like decisions they made was making all the colors. So smart. You could get here, any like, color, man. I remember you would go to like the Nike like store. Exclusive one. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was about to say. There was Why like fifteen stop making them? colors. Well, because yeah, they make them, but because they make people, like a different iteration yeah. of them on the stuff. But also the thing that do you remember when so elite elite socks are thick, right? So like yeah, there, bro. I remember, and this is 
random shout out. Shout out to our guy Connor Jeffrey. He once pulled up with three elite socks because for FIBA we were red, white, and blue, and he had red, white, and blue on. That's I different. Like, that's like a cast with yeah. how funny. big those socks are. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, you say, Connor had crazy his ankles like crazy, crazy. Funny you say Connor. Funny you say Connor with the socks because when when Will just said that, the first time I ever saw somebody double socking was Connor's older brother Tucker. Tucker Jeffrey. Yeah. Double talking at the the gym, and I was like, "Why are you doing that?" And he's like, "He he told me like, you'll you'll get it, you'll get it when you get older." And I was yeah. like, it's just like yeah, double stocking, thing, yeah, double socking was huge." All right, Will, you got your power forward remaining. All right, my power forward. Um, back to back to just pure viewing. Um, we'll go with like the D rows, like the the leg sleeves that kind of have like the shin pad. Mm. Um, so I was, I was I was never never athletic enough to to kind of don validate, one of those to, to validate wearing yeah. those, but especially like D Rose, like his MVP year, just like I don't know whatever for whatever reason him and those leg sleeves or it's like stop below the knee, and I just thought that was very tough. And you know, that, I won't. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say that definitely is synonymous with like a, a quick athletic guard. Yeah, like just not my game, but like look look cool if if if, the, if you kind of fall into that category. Yeah. Uh, I do have to say, I, 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 someone can refute me if I'm wrong, but like, I think, uh, DJ was the first person I saw wear the full leg sleeve, just one leg sleeve, like cut off the tights and then just do mm-hmm. one leg sleeve. But like, that's not the same as what D Rose wore. I'm just saying, like, just thinking in my head, like, Dude, having like you have to be athletic to like rock stuff. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Like, I mean, that, even even that. Like, I think the I think like the one leg suit kind of came later in, in my yeah. career and, and all careers. And like, that was another one. Like, hey, dude, if you pull that off, it looks pretty sick. Not gonna see me do it. Just not my yeah, game. But exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Game. I'm like, like I could. Yeah, not my game. But like, hey, if, you pull, if you pull it off, like I'll kind of I'll kind of tip my cap when uh, when I look cool. Imagine if you were just. The like the kid that had bad shin splints and you needed it, but like you definitely weren't. Gonna play yeah, that, that, that's a tough one. Like I'm kind of I'm kind of taking every route before before <laughs> the the Lexi's. Like I'm like doing pre wrap bands. I'm taking, yeah. I'm the kinda... doctor's like, no, you gotta wear this leg sleeve. Please, God, no, I have a twenty inch vertical. <laughs> yeah, like, doc, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> Guys trying to slap glass. <laughs> yeah, the leg sleeve. <laughs> this, is, this isn't good. This isn't it. Um. Okay, my center. I have this one at the center because I think it's, you know, sometimes you don't get in the game. Sometimes you, you're on the bench. you still got to be a good teammate. And, you know, some centers don't really move well. So that's why it's the center because you're on the bench. I need a towel. I need the towel. I need the bench mob what? towel. So I'm putting the bench mob <laughs> towel at my center. I love a good bench mob towel, man. Oh, like it makes man. you – you can be half disengaged to a game with the bench mob towel and you'll look like you're the biggest fan there, right? So – Give me the you bench mob like towel. Half, yeah, half wave like something like, happens, yeah. you, you, you do one of these. You 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 know, you yeah. do one of these. That, what happened? I don't know. Crowd went wild. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the bench mob towel is a big time yes. player. It's a big time player. Uh, me? But uh yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah, you're good. Uh I mean I, my camp is big on best available, so I'm going best available here. I cannot believe this made it to the last round. I think this is the last round. Yeah. I'm just going with the headband here. <laughs> standard headband, standard, standard headband. headband, yeah. The sweatband, yeah. I, I had it on my list, kind of pivoted away from it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, which is fair. It's a classic, timeless classic. Timeless classic. Yeah. Timeless yeah. Timeless yeah. classic. Timeless classic. The, the Travis Kelsey of basketball accessories. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I don't know where Travis definitely <laughs> wouldn't say that. I would it's say okay, that. It, it's, it's getting late. You're gonna have a tough time. Are you saying it's washed? Is that what you were trying to say there? No, I'm Headless. saying that it's been a staple for a really long time, but like you know, he doesn't maybe get the same hype that he got like okay. five years ago. <laughs> hey, Jared, what you got? Uh, I got, I got a good one. It's a pivot, but it's a good one. Uh, at shooting guard, um, shout out MJ, man. I got the gum. <laughs> I got really? the wow. gum. That's an like, interesting. That that's like you're you're. I'm I'm all about my business. Also. To your credit, Jared, you live by this because you always have gum in at the gym. So yep. that is that's a true that's a good one because it's not just you BSing. So I like no. that actually. Yeah. That one's big, always been big cinnamon gum guy. Yeah. Always been Shout interesting out. to me. Like especially in college, like obviously they do a good job having like the, the box of gum at the table. 
for whatever reason, anytime I tried playing with gum, I felt like I was losing my breath faster. Oh, getting so tired. Like, uh -huh. I, I don't know. Maybe I just, I didn't do it. And like here and there, I tried it just because like the gum would be sitting there. And like, I don't know, I guess I kind of want to, <laughs> kind of want to try it out. But what a real, you know, like I would get gassed way too quick whenever I tried yeah. to play with gum. The one, yeah, I don't the one that I always saw at the scores table was, was chapstick. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, staying away from that. Yeah. Um, I went through a gum chewing phase once because I have a bad habit of biting my fingernails. So I was like, okay, maybe if I'm chewing gum, like I won't think about biting my fingernails. That was when I was like younger. This was like end of middle school. I vividly remember trying to practice with gum. So I would stop biting my fingernails. And then, uh, you know, luckily we don't do that anymore. But uh, yeah, I, I had to try the gum thing and uh, I agree completely. I was getting gassed out there. Mm. It was bad. Not the Jordan yeah. effect. That's for sure. Yeah, it's each his own, I guess, obviously, but just – Interesting one. Jordan just oh, chewed oh, his gum really aggressive too. Yeah, no, it meant something. It meant yeah, something. <laughs> like it was, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like I, he, that was like talking shit, but not yeah. saying anything. Like oh, I'm over here chewing this gum, frying you. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, I walk, might walk on. I'm interested to see what people do here. Yeah, I think so. This one, I don't know why I came to this one, and I kind of like wrote some others down, and I just keep circling back to this one just because I don't know if this is something that I would do full transparency. Uh, but I think it's a really, really nice idea. Um, the wedding ring on the laces. Shout out Jokic, man. Oh, you know what? I actually I, really like that. Yeah, That's like cool. I don't know if I would commit to doing that because I would be scared that it would like I don't know somehow fall off. Which I know, like, yeah, it's something like that. Like, but I think it's like a really cool thing, and it's cool that they highlight it and that he like he you know that's like his thing. So I think that's yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that's I a cool accessory. Like good. That's yeah. a really good one, actually. Yeah, that's cool. I walked on here. Uh, I was lucky enough. Hmm. We had this my junior year of high school, and it was definitely like my favorite warm up that we had that I've had ever. I've got the uh, warm up hoodies, specifically the Nike Tech ones. I don't know how popular they are anymore, but you guys know what I'm talking about. They're yeah, no, the yeah. the shooting shirt hoodies, the zip ups. With the zip, oh, so you guys were Joker's just one knee, okay? Yeah, that we we did that year, that's for sure. Son, Sunday did Sunday wasn't cheap that year, so the warm up hoodie that's a good one, though. That guy knew he was leaving, he didn't have to worry about he it. Did. Okay, he that's cool. Yep. Oh. He ran up the budget, shout out to him. Thank yeah. you, Thank you, Rich. <laughs> let me let me light this match and then get out of here. Yep, ran he knew what he was doing. You guys might throw a flag on this one, and if so, I gotta quickly make an audible, but that's fine. Like, we're talking basketball accessories, and my walk-on is the basketball itself. Because you you can show up with all the drift in the world or whatever, but if, you, uh, if someone doesn't pull up with a ball, we're not hooping. We're not hooping. Uh, is that really an accessory, ball. though? It can't be a basketball Sweet. accessory if it is the basketball. Necessity, How is that? A, a, necessity versus accessory, right? Oh, you know yeah. what? It's 11 o'clock. I'm going to let yeah, you like, have it. Like, it I don't think that's like, a bad like, play, though. I don't think it's because, that's a bad play. No, no, because think about it, bro, Jared, Jared, you carry a bag of six balls around to go to training because kids don't show up with basketballs all the time, right? You could show up with all, you got kids showing up with crazy, you know, random print shorts. I just don't know that it socks, all this stuff. Accessory. Hey, real hoopers show up with the ball, basketball. man. Did, did you That's take the saying. basketball bag today or did I take the basketball bag today? I took the basketball bag. Yeah, today. so I had four more workouts and did not need a basketball bag. There's so many times that you pull up to go hoop and people don't have a basketball, bro. You need a oh, ball, but itself. it's basketball accessory. Then you're picking uh, the subject. But I'm okay, fine, it fine. Okay, fine, fine. No, 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 no. I have a good audible though. I have actually a good audible. All right, I'm okay. going with I'm going with with the baby powder or the chalk for the chalk toss. I think that's right. sick. I think. Can we MJ go back to the basketball? <laughs> oh my god, bro! I, I was but MJ did it first where he clapped in the scores table's face right with the with the chalk, and then obviously LeBron has the iconic chalk toss. So I'll take the chalk. I'll take the chalk uh, since I can't take the basketball. So uh, <laughs> no, you can have the basketball based on that <laughs> second choice. That's a good choice. Don't hate. See, now you're just being. Hated. I just don't think it's an excess. That's a, I mean, oh, that's yeah, fine. that's I why I was. I was a, I, I, you no, pick. You fine. pick which one you want. No, I'll do the chalk toss. Tommy. Right. Tommy's big part of the committee. He said no. That's cool. He has good reasoning. You were just being a hater. That seems to be your answer to everything. What we got, Tom? Uh, I already went. Or will me close it well, out. See, it's, that's it's, how you know it's eleven o'clock. Full full circle is just the one that I did. Hopefully, differs enough from Tommy's. Just, I'm gonna go with the long sleeve underneath the practice jersey. 
I just, yes. Will did like that. I, I like yeah. that a lot. I, I, I kind of, that was, that was my, my standard practice at, at Sac State, especially like on the road in the walkthrough, like, you know, you're walking through campus, you got your long sleeve on a jersey, they kind of know who, who the shooter is, who the walk-on is, right? So, yeah. Kind of, kind of, yeah. kind of like that. More that I for one sure cry. say that's different. I for sure say that's different from the loose. Yeah, I could not. I can't hoop with a long sleeve. So I hate. Yeah. I'm with Tommy on this and, one. And, I've and never Will subscribed had the tight to ones too. Will had the tight long sleeve and the tight short sleeve. Did you ever play in them, Will? Um, not the long long sleeve. I'll say one year at SAC. This one was new to me. It was like the like the quarterback, like the three quarter sleeve that kind of goes down like to your elbow. Okay. That one. That one wasn't a fan of. Um, I feel like shooting that would like hinder your shoulder. Just, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I already don't like shooting with sleeves on anyways. Yeah. Like I feel like I don't know. I'll say yeah, it's got to be the right long sleeve. I I, I had this one that sat just kind of the baggy one for practice that yeah. still like cuffed around the wrist. So like around the wrist, yeah, it wasn't so. touching the hand. So that one seemed to work out okay for me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually not. surprised, Luke. Didn't yeah, guys that have been long sleeves under their jerseys, the tailored cut off. I don't get it. I like. I look at them crazy, and then they usually are nice that do it. So respect. I yeah, that one just kind of found my way to it, and that's one I liked. Yeah, the, Jared's right though. The tailored cutoff. That's the way. If you're not working out in a tailored cutoff, yeah, you know, I do I like. I mean, I, I agree with you. Agree I like with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, that's why I like. I'm waiting for you to throw me one of those shirts, but you're not. Oh, gonna that's do that. not happening. <laughs> yeah, that's you're like the not. socks, man. <laughs> We're like, at least you know, like. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I look at like you'll wear one. I'm like, ah, oh, that one's nice. Uh, I need. He needs to get another one of those. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't get enough. <laughs> well, what do you got for us, Waters? <laughs> man, this has been an interesting starting five. It's been a fun starting five, but uh, you know, you can have all the hats, gloves, and belts, but without fifty chips a night, your greens and reg won't be felt, and breaking par won't be worth the fight. Ooh, there you go. Right there. there you go. That's what I need. Uh, yeah, man, I think we Another yeah. late night episode in the books. Well, shout out to you, brother. I think this is this, yeah, third time coming on, right? Third. Yeah. Th- third, yeah. yeah. Pre- appreciate you, you guys are, always, always. You are a, in a special yeah. group. So, and obviously you deserve it. So we really do appreciate you, man. No, Go Eagles, man. Guys. Go Eagles. Get that nest rocking. That back to it. There's no doubt. Well, with that being said, episode 112. Appreciate you Michelle guys. Michelle still run that? These are your favorite walk-ons. <laughs> We're walking. <laughs>